Hey, hi everyone. Uh, today we have an oven here and it's a really common problem in a lot of households, especially if you have a built-in oven and you don't really use them, you know, use it like once, uh, twice a year. What you will see is as soon as you turn on the oven, the house will trip. And what causes that is uh, a short in the circuit. So I'm going to teach you how to fix it. But before I do, and this is really serious, you have to be really sure about what you're doing and be very, very, very careful. If you're not sure, please engage a professional who knows what they're doing to fix your oven. But if you know what you're doing and you want to try, go ahead, but please be very careful and follow my instructions step by step so that, you know, to ensure your own safety. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. So um, we have an oven here. And what is a, a common cause is that moisture gets into the coil. And one way to solve that problem is to dry out your oven by turning it from the lowest setting to the highest setting. But sometimes at the lowest setting, you can't even turn on the oven, the house trips immediately. So first and foremost, you want to turn off the circuit breaker to the oven and remove the ground wire and I'll show you guys how to do that. Sorry. Okay, so I'm back. I went and uh, switched off the circuit breaker which is connected to the oven. There is a switch inside here and just to be sure, I'm turning it on and there's no light on the LED so I can be quite certain that this is, is dead. I'm going to pull out the oven and take a look inside. Where are you connected? Okay. Okay. So, uh, over here we have three wires. We have the green, the red, and the black. The red or brown one is always live. The blue and the black is always neutral. And the green one, that's your ground. So I have a contactless test pen here, just to make sure that there are no live current flowing through any of the wires. And now I'm going to disconnect it. The previous installer used tape, I'm not a big fan, but it is what it is. So. Okay, I've disconnected the ground and I put in a, a wire cap. So if you can, as you can see, the ground wire has been disconnected, leaving the live and the neutral connected. Okay, so we're going to leave that there. I'm going to slide the oven back. Okay. And we're just going to leave it like that for now. It, it makes it easier to slide in and out later. And from this point, you must make sure that no one touches the oven at all. I'll show you why in just a bit. Okay. The circuit breaker is on. Right now, the main switch in the cupboard is switched off. So there shouldn't be any current running through the oven. Okay. I'm going to set to 100 degrees and fan forced mode. And then I'm going to turn the oven on. Okay. As you can see, my contactless voltage detector is already going nuts because the entire oven is live. Okay? So you don't want to touch it. You want to make sure that no one touches the oven. If you touch the oven now, you're going to get a, quite a nasty shock. You can see, this is live, this is live, this is live, that's live. So the whole oven case is live right now. And I'm going to use my test pan just to turn the oven on. And we're going to run it at 100 degrees for about 15 minutes. And then I'm going to bump it up to 150, 200 and maximum at 15 minutes per interval. And then, fingers crossed, the oven should be fixed. But for now, we're just going to leave it be and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so the first 15 minutes they're up. Um, it is still running. I'm going to switch it off now so that I can manipulate the controls. So you switch it off at the wall, it switches off, you use your test pen just to make sure there's no more current running through it. Now you set it to 150. 
Once it's at 150, you switch it on at the wall again. Okay, you see it's live. And then I'm just going to use my test pan to press and activate the oven. We're going to keep that for another 15 minutes. At 150, 200, and I'll come back to you again once it's at max power and we'll talk about uh, what to do next. Okay, so we are back here again. The uh, oven has been running at maximum power for the past 15 minutes. The case is still live. So now we're going to turn everything off. The first thing you want to do is turn it off at the wall. If you've got a wall switch, you want to check that the oven now is, uh, has been cut off from the power. You switch off all the buttons and then open it and let it cool. Okay, it's very hot at this point of time. You give it like 10 or 20 minutes. You want it to cool down before you can take it out and reconnect the ground wire. So I'm going to turn off the, uh, the power at the circuit breaker and I'll be right back once everything is nice and cold. Okay, so the oven is nice and, the oven is nice and cool already. Um, what I've done is I've pulled it out and I've reconnected the ground. And now I've put it back and turned on the circuit breaker. So... I'm going to turn it on at the wall now and before you do anything test the casing of your oven to make sure that it's not live so now that the ground is on as you can see the light is blinking the oven is not live anymore my test pan is on as you can see so it's perfectly safe to go and touch and now what you want to do is turn it up I'm going to use fan mode because fan mode switches on the upper and lower coil as well as the fan, so all your electronics in the oven turns on. And we're going to start the oven. We'll leave it like that for about 5 minutes to see if the house trips. If it doesn't, then it's all well and good, your oven is fixed. Alright, I'll be, I'll be back in 5 minutes. Okay, so it's been 5 minutes already. The oven is still running, the house is all good. So. Uh, that's how you fix a tripping oven. So as I mentioned before, it's really dangerous. The, um, the whole casing becomes live. As long as you do not touch it when the power is flowing through the oven, you should be all well and good. But if you're not sure, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, of course, by all means, get a professional to do it for you. But if you're going to do it DIY, this is what you have to do to try to solve the oven tripping problem. If that still doesn't cut it, I'm sorry you have to call in a repairman. If you like that video, do like, share and subscribe. Click the notification bell for more videos like this. You know, um, if you subscribe, it will really help. I put out videos uh, almost every week and uh, you get, you'll be the first to know if I come up with a new video. Thanks for that and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.